on an emergency basis at the hospital, basically, because of the birth of his uh, uh, grandchild, a, a such auspicious uh, occasion uh, on top of that. And, uh, and then uh, it was the spirit of, of Islam and the love that he had through, in the work that we saw that he did through uh, Mercy on Wheels. And actually, uh, he also spoke on the same panel as me uh, at a uh, Ramadan mm -hmm. uh, gathering here in, uh, in Fremont as well. And truly, I mean, he did definitely look at people, uh, well, actually, let's put it this way. He never looked at people by the basis of uh, their appearance or their mm -hmm. physical appearance uh, or, or, or you know, even what, uh, you know, if he knew that they were from a different background or, or, or faith, that was never a, uh, you know, a, a part of discussion within the work that he did. Right. And Alhamdulillah, and Allah gave him a level of shahada, mm -hmm. subhanAllah. He gave him a level of shahada and matriadam, and may Allah accept, inshallah, and give him Correct. the daraja of uh, salihin, exactly. inshallah, right. uh, because he died in a very honorable path. That's true. And a path of going and helping. And this is the spirit of Islam. He this lived his whole life. Islam. I mean, if you look at the, the projects that he was involved in, you anything that you name, whether it's feeding the homeless mm -hmm. or feeding the poor or taking care of orphans or whatever it may be he was involved in. But w within, he spoke to, he first contact, uh, contacted us in October of 2010. Mm -hmm. And his premise was, that we as a Muslim community, we've focused on many different things. He said, but if you look at this ayah, it says the poor and the orphan and the, the prisoner. Prison. He said, we're doing so much work within the, the first two categories. He said, where are we helping within the Absolutely. prisons? So when he began asking, one of the only, um, the only organization here in the Bay Area that's, that's focused primarily on uh, pris uh, prisons, and one of the only in the U.S., um, was our foundation, the mm -hmm. Taba Foundation. So he contacted us, and he, through his work, he established a collaboration between the Taba Foundation and ICNA, the mm -hmm. Bay Area chapter, um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. of Feed the Prisoners, where um, people, when they uh, order for their qurbani, their udhiyya, the slaughtering of the, the animal, mm -hmm. the sacrificial for animal for their Eid al-Adha, which is coming up in about 40 days, mm -hmm. they do that through the ICNA website. It's slaughtered here, zabiha, according mm -hmm. to uh, Islamic standards. Mm -hmm. It's packaged according to USDA standards, frozen, kept in deep freeze, and then through us, it'll be delivered Mashallah. to various prisoners um, that don't have access to meat on their Eid, uh, their Eid functions. Mm -hmm. um, and SubhanAllah, I spoke to him on a Sunday and he passed, and we were discussing this uh, feeding the prisoner program and on, he passed away on a Wednesday. So, uh, so also, we, I mean, to, I mean uh, basically to the last of his breath uh, that he had and the last uh, moments that he had on this earth, he was in a continuous effort definitely. of doing good. Of doing good and, and uh, showing the uh, the true face of compassion of Islam and the true face of uh, rahma and mercy that Islam entails mm -hmm. and Alhamdulillah we find in our tradition and like you said what we see uh, in, in the present-day media is uh, just selling sponsorships That's true. And in order the more controversial you can get on TV, uh, uh, the most viewers you the get, more ratings, the more, more ratings, and then of course those ratings turn into uh, the bottom line, which are dollars. But unfortunately, they don't f know the responsibility that they have on their sh uh, shoulders, that when you convey something that is incorrect uh, at, at this level, and the amount of uh, damage you do to a people and we talked about this uh, previously as well, that they coerce a good people, a honest people, a, a loving and a compassionate people. They coerce them to fear something that should not be feared, sure. something that should be uh, basically, that, that something that is, is uh, uh, truly in its essence there to salvage them and salvage. And yani wallahi, uh, I'm not saying this in a, in a biased way, as, as being a, a Muslim, uh, but I'm s saying it in a, in, a, in a, I would say, in a academic, in an intellectual, and also in a uh, realistic uh, format that I believe what, what, what's happening in this nation, in this country, that Islam could truly overall be the salvage of this nation, the way it's heading right now, from its economy to the way people are being treated, uh, to the way people are being addressed, to, to, the, the, to the moral and the ethic of the people. Ethic right? of the foundation of I mean, the family, the foundation of society. I think Islam 
uh, could play a, a pivotal it, it role. And it already is. We're seeing that in the example that you mentioned of Malcolm X. He was headed on a path of destruction. He was in destruction. He was on a one-way train. Almost destroyed. You know, to destruction. Yeah. But it was Islam that, that saved him from that. And there are so many people um, that, that are on their way to destruction, to spiritual destruction, to even their own physical destruction, to wind up a statistic that's studied, you know, by And we're uh, seeing academics. it every day. We're seeing uh, it every day. But it's Islam that, that is saving them. And sure. it's something that, that saves the honor and the dignity of the people. If, if you look at people like Bilal al-Habashi, who mm -hmm. within the, the society of Mecca, he was not uh, accepted because of his economical they status. Were he, was a, he, he was He was a slave, exactly. He was mm -hmm. dehumanized because of his skin color and because of his uh, his status, so social status. But the Prophet ﷺ looked at his core and brought him up. Bisha. And a lot of people, especially the African Americans, but in general, he, he, uh, any people within prisons, They've led a life where society has dehumanized them. This is not to take and away. They were their the prisoners personal. of their, their time. They were prisoners too. Uh, yani, uh, as they were slaves, Sayyidina Bilal al Habashi, yani, uh, you know, not only you know, you know, uh, the slavery was a, a prison system mm -hmm. within uh, a household. True, right? So, literally, it was a reflection of today's prisoners that were one of the first. Uh, to stand beside Prophet ﷺ, and one of the first for Prophet to stand beside them. And, uh, and within uh, uh, the story of Bilal al uh, when the Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq basically purchased uh, his freedom, and when he went to uh, the uh, you know, so-called master uh, of uh, Sayyidina Bilal al and his ultimate master is Allah subhanahu wa ta and asked and he said, you know, I forgot the number, I think uh, a few dirhams. Uh, was the number. And so um, uh, when Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq gave it to him, uh, he had said that, oh Abu Bakr, oh, I'm taking this because I, this is the first uh, amount that I told you to give. But wallahi, he told the master, so-called master, told Sayyidina Abu Bakr that if you would have negotiated, I would have given Bilal to you for a lesser amount. And look at what Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq says because they're looking at the core mm -hmm. Of, of that person, the, 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 the actual kafia of that human being. And they said that, oh, so-and-so, if you would have asked 10 times more for Bilal, I would have given you that. Forget negotiating down. Right. I would have paid more for the freedom of Bilal. And yani, I think we're, we, we have an opportunity. We, we can't go and, and free somebody from Santa Rita or uh, San Quentin we could probably not be able to go and free them on a physical level. But I think we are able, we have the foundation and the structure. To give uh, them structure. freedom, like one of true our... True freedom. True this, freedom, this right. free, Freedom of, uh, of their spirit. Right, and uh, one of our of models, models for our correspondence course, because uh, the majority of work that we do is correspondence through the prisoners, because mm -hmm. we work with prisoners in Wisconsin, in Georgia, here in, Cal in California. So it's, it's difficult to, to have... Uh, Personal interaction, have Absolutely. volunteers go to the prisoners. So we send them. Uh, and some who are, I think, in uh, maximum security, it's difficult to even it's difficult, get right. to them. So correspondence. So uh, is we send uh, recorded audios. Mm -hmm. There's methods for you know to answer questions, to receive phone phone calls, and so forth. Um, but one of our models is, and just as a side note, the um, uh, the, the program is called the Al Hajj Malik Shabazz mm -hmm. Distance uh, um, Education. Uh, program. For those of may, may, you may not know, Al Hajj Malik uh, Shabazz. Uh, was the final name mm -hmm. uh, that Sheikh Malcolm L, uh, X uh, took upon himself. And so uh, he's probably known predominantly as uh, Malcolm, X, Malcolm right. X. But it was his uh, name once he came to Sunni Islam. Exactly. Um, and it's, uh, for us it's a reminder that just as Malcolm X went from being a thug on the street to being known as Satan to being somebody that really was the one who opened the door for da'wah in America. Mm -hmm. He established, you and, know, and not, not the, just for the, the African American for community. everybody. I think you know, he any opened Muslim the door in America for... should recognize the work that Malcolm X by giving his life, by giving his life, Absolutely. by not being afraid to speak the truth that he opened up the door for people to be Muslim in America, mm -hmm. for many people and regardless like you said of their race, of their color, of where they, their background, but he opened it up. But we want to remind ourselves and others that there are many other Malcolm X's in Absolutely. prisons. And Absolutely. And some of them aren't even Muslim right now. Some no. of them are that Umar that is a staunch enemy to Islam mm -hmm. or a staunch enemy to himself. Mm -hmh. But They are the Khalid they're given, bin Walids, they're the Malcolm exactly. X's that, 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 that are uh, uh, that are thirsty, mm -hmm. that are thirsty, that uh, be shak, that Allah is the ultimate guide. But we can be a source of giving that 
uh, water uh, of uh, a true survival to quench and that's the, the thirst that they have. That's the true. Um, that's the true freedom because you can mm. be in bondage, you can be a slave, Absolutely. and you can be free. And our motto is freedom through education. Yeah. So, like and you said, on, some of on them that note, you uh, can't you can't get them out of prison, but you can you can give them freedom because Absolutely. there are some people that are living free in society. They're in prison, and, and they're in prison. And Absolutely. the Prophet Absolutely. addressed this, and he says. Uh, Ta'isa, you know, woe to the person who is Abdul Dinar, to the slave of, mm, of the wealth, money. the slave of khamar, the slave of alcohol, the slave of his own desires. Mm -hmm. You know, he's imprisoned by his own desire. If somebody is free to travel the world, world, and yet he he has to he has to satisfy his nafs, he doesn't have freedom. No, he's ha he's working to satisfy his own. Uh, desires, desires his own um, carnal desires of food, of this, of that, of whatever it is, and so he doesn't have the freedom. So mm -hmm. what what Islam is giving us is the ability to to unlock ourselves for, uh, through that. So to, uh, we're working mainly through the pri prisons, but uh, we also have other projects, you know, to work with other people. But it's to remind ourselves and remind absolutely. others that Islam is the key to unlock people from their Bishan. own prisons. I, I want to actually address a, a a beautiful quote of Sheikh uh, Malcolm X, Al Malik uh, Shabazz that he said in his autobiography, and I quote, that months passed, months passed without my even thinking about being imprisoned. In fact, up to then, I had never, up to then meaning up to the time I embraced Islam, I had never been so truly free in my life, incarcerated, behind bars, in jail. A man says that I forgot about this physical imprisonment, and in fact, I haven't been truly as free as uh, uh, ever in my life as I have when I embraced uh, the, the, the faith and the uh, uh, tradition uh, of, of Islam. So subhanAllah, so imagine, I, I want you to reflect on this, the audience, including ourselves, that imagine those people, those men and women who are incarcerated, yet the nur of Islam, the tradition of Islam, uh, frees them from the imprisonment of the self. Imagine you and I, imagine us in the free world, quote unquote, freeing ourselves in the essence of our existence and getting ourselves to the maqam of Ashraf al makhluqat the best of creation, which we can truly uh, aspire to. And Allah has given us the, uh, uh, the path, and the Prophet ﷺ has given us the path. Uh, I believe we're going to be going to Adhan right now and we'll be coming back. Uh, uh, keep, keep in tune, inshallah.
Welcome back to uh, Islam in America. Uh, thank you for staying tuned. That was the uh, time for uh, Isha Salah. The azan was given for the timing here, of course, in uh, California and mainly in, in the Bay Area. And again, I have uh, my uh, esteemed brother, Sheikh Rami Ansur, uh, beside me. And we'll, we have been talking about, uh, for the past uh, 45 minutes, I believe, about uh, Islam in uh, U.S. Uh, prisons and uh, Muslims within uh, the U.S. prison system. And uh, we actually close with the quote of um, uh, Sheikh uh, Al-Hajj Malik Shabazz, uh, uh, Malcolm X, and, and about the true freedom that he received uh, even while he was incarcerated in prison and while he was uh, in a state of detainment physically. But in reality, he felt the truest freedom he's ever felt in his uh, life. And I actually want to uh, 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 quote a few other inmates uh, who I uh, came across through some of my research about uh, uh, Muslim prisoners or those who mainly accepted mm -hmm. uh, Islam in prison. And uh, one comes from a uh, Richard Walker who's actually incarcerated in Jackson State Prison. And he says, uh, 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 quote, that uh, I was rebellious I was headed for self-destruction. And within Islam, I came to a peace uh, with myself, a peace that I, was, I have been searching for all this time. So basically all my life I've been searching for this peace, which I came across uh, it through Islam. Uh, it's the peace that I found with Islam. So many of uh, these men who are incarcerated, they find a level of uh, freedom, of, of in, um, uh, emancipation. I mean, like we said earlier, it's not an emancipation of physical emancipation or physical uh, freedom that they're, uh, when they accept Islam, they, they're out of the jail system and, and they're out in society. But no, in reality, they are uh, uh, spiritually free and emancipated from the fitnas that may lie within, from the kafirs that uh, which you were also mentioning earlier, that hold us back as uh, human beings. But we have that potential to uh, excel. We have, Allah has given us the DNA and the framework for us to uh, build on and be able to excel uh, ourselves. And there's another quote of another inmate. Uh, this, again, uh, the, the name's Richard Walker, but he, he's a Muslim uh, revert. Uh, he, uh, another brother says, uh, his name is Matt uh, Trimble, that Islam installed in me discipline and molded a, a positive attitude in me that I had inside of me. Look, I mean, I want you to like look into what he is saying. That I had inside of me, but I really didn't know I had within myself. Islam is a shining light within my life. Matt Trimble, also an inmate at uh, Jackson State uh, Prison. And you see the, the, the reform of these people, you know, that it's, that, that the, the, the society, and again, I want to uh, preface this by saying, we don't want to say that a lot of these people that, you know, led a life of crime, wound up in prison, became Muslim in prison, that it was society alone that, that did that. You know, they yeah. had a choice, people had yes, a choice, absolutely. and whatever faith you are, <coughs> um, Allah, God, has put within each human being a knowledge within their heart where they know the right and wrong. Mm -hmm. So people make choices and they know Which the right choices. Which you know, right? right? They're conscious yeah. in their heart and the heart, the qalb, knows what's good and what's bad by its, by its nature. Mm -hmm. But it's the parents and the society that moves people away from that good nature. So we don't want to take the, um, the responsibility totally off the individual that led a la life mm -hmm. of leading to destruction. But at the same time, we don't want to uh, close negate, the doors on close the, uh, negate the fact that society played a role in creating this individual Absolutely. that made choices that landed them in leading a life of crime. But once they're in prison, a lot of the prisons that are set up for rehabilitation fail at that. Mm -hmm. And this is something that if the, uh, the prison systems are honest with themselves, they'll realize that the system mm -hmm. is just a holding yeah, tank. And, and, and they're not research, rehabilitating themselves. In my research, I came across that, uh, you know, uh, I, was, uh, I was very alarmed that 60%, 60% uh, 
of uh, prisoners who are released uh, go back end to up prison. back in jail. Right. And, it's, so and that's, that's a low, a that's a low statistic. Uh, statistic. Yeah. I mean, it's more, it's closer between 70 or 90 percent. That was a below. I mean, that, that's a reflection a, of the system's, the system's inability. Right, it's an inability. I mean, and there's a lot of things at play at that. Once they're, look, as an example, within the prison systems, to house an inmate, it costs between an average within the state of California twenty to thirty thousand dollars a year. Mm -hmm. That's our tax dollars. We pay taxes. If not more. And if and that's yeah. If you go to the medical facilities where they have prisoners that need require medical assistance, and some of them are just essentially on life support. Maybe they were convicted 30, 40 years ago, but the state is saying we can't let them go. At those, the average is $500,000 a year. That's of our money. Absolutely. We have libraries sh shutting down. We have schools overcrowded. We have all these problems. But more uh, prisons but you are have being this, built. More prisons are being built, and so much money is being directed towards that. Mm -hmm. And yet, when these prisoners are released, if you look at a prisoner, for maybe 30 years, they were spending twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000. To, to house and maintain them and pay for the, the cost. The majority of that is for the um, paying the, 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 the staff and the administration of those prisons. But when they're released, it's not even a, a hundred or two hundred dollars a month to help them get back on their mm -hmm. feet. Mm -hmm. So I you mean, can yeah, see that the imagine, system is, and then they put them back in. They put them back in the neighborhoods where mm -hmm. they committed the crimes. Mm -hmm. So the whole system within the prison and outside of the prison is not there to help them. Mm -hmm. But one of the things that even the administration recognizes is that Islam and faith in general faith in general will rehabilitate them. So regardless of the programs that are available within the prisons or outside of mm -hmm. the prisons that are set up. Uh, it's, it's, it's faith that, that, that rehabilitates them, and out of all of the faiths that prisoners go to, once they go into Islam, eight out of ten, uh, once people go to prison and they choose to rehabilitate themselves through uh, faith, eight out of ten choose Islam. Absolutely. And so they see Islam rehabilitating them. Mm -hmm. They see that uh, prisons about... are failing. Whereas Islam is, is rehabilitating mm -hmm. people, and this is not to say that it's a, that every person that becomes Muslim totally changes his Absolutely. life around because you yeah. have you have various you know levels mm -hmm. of, of of people and their adherence to the faith and their implementation of the faith mm -hmm. but you do have a powerful force within the prison um, so at min there are many prisons where the 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 prison administration and the the other uh, the pastors of other faiths if there's not a muslim pastor or muslim uh, chaplain at that prison they're inviting the muslim community Mm -hmm. to come in to establish programs because they see the benefit. Mm -hmm. uh, but the, the problem is, is that within a lot of Muslim communities here in the U.S. and in Canada and the West in general, the Europe, they don't realize what's going on in the prisons. Mm -hmm. And even in those that do know that, okay, there's and something going on. their tax monies are being sucked uh, dry. Well, uh, uh, they don't know the from the system. aspect of, of that there's Islam, that people are becoming Muslim. Yeah, yeah. And there's people, like as an example, we, we have one letter, or letter from a prison in Wisconsin where 17 Muslims are sharing one copy of the Quran. SubhanAllah. Because they don't have access to resources. No. Now you go to the average Muslim household, and you Several might have copies. a four to seven cop, seventeen Which copies for some, every. Which uh, 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 you know, sad to say, that uh, are are collecting dust on. They're just on decoration, shelves, you know. It's um, some. It's uh, uh, yeah. and uh, so. The, I, the, the point is is that there, there's, a, there's an extreme lack of resources for these people that want to become Muslim. Mm -hmm. And so we as a community have to facilitate that. And uh, actually, I was going to go to uh, this quote by uh, uh, a um, uh, former super, uh, supervisory chaplain of the Federal Bureau of uh, Prisoners. Mm -hmm. uh, and so he was also a... Um, uh, uh, he was also an advisor to uh, many other uh, state prisons uh, throughout the country, uh, Frederick Dean, uh, who was also a Muslim convert. He actually became Mus uh, Muslim in uh, the, the prison system mm -hmm. through what, the, almost the same channels of Malcolm X, through the Nation of Islam. And then, of course, going back to traditional Orthodox, uh, if you want to call it, uh, traditional Islam of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah, which he's uh, practicing today. And he says uh, that the Muslim inmate has been a positive benefit for the prisons uh, that, they uh, that they have been in. So the prisons that they have been in, those who converted to Islam uh, and those who uh, came to the fold of Islam, they've been a positive benefit to the prison. That means that uh, the, the wardens, that the, uh, the guards, they had seen a difference uh, between uh, them prior to accepting the faith and then after uh, the faith that it, not only did it benefit that person's soul, 
that he said uh, that they would quote them, uh, that I quoted them earlier, that said that they emp emancipated them from the, uh, from the desires mm -hmm. and the soul that they had, but they also reflected uh, the good of Islam and the benefits of Islam to the prison in general. Right. From, and this from is something that we've, we've experienced for, firsthand as an example, one of uh, our students, Yusuf Wiley, mm -hmm. who also uh, teaches many, most of the curriculum that we offer uh, for prisoners. He, on the, in, the, in the section of the prison that he's in, he's actually maintained um, a lot of peace, not only amongst the Muslims and keeping them from getting involved in, in illegal activity, well. but yeah. also the, the non-Muslims as well. And the, and the staff and the, the administration recognized that, that, uh, that if he wasn't there, a lot of people would be engaged in fights, in gang activities, in what would uh, um, culminate to a riot, which they call a war, a prison mm -hmm. war, where it's hundreds of people against each other. Mm -hmm. So he brings a lot of peace and negotiation, and one of the ways he does that is through programs uh, to remind people of their humanness and to remind them of their chivalry. One of the programs that he's developed uh, to, to, to offer to inmates is called the Chivalry Program, mm -hmm. to remind them of the, the and is, is this uh, in uh, uh, like a branch of the curriculum that Taiba has been right? One providing? of the, our three main uh, areas that we focus on is on Islamic education, rehabilitation, and work uh, work skills development. Mm -hmm. Now, right now, we're at the stage where we're focusing and also reentry as well and reentry, re -entry right? Reentry yeah. programs for, but within the prisons, it's these three: okay. it's uh, work skills development to give them the abilities that once they come back into society, they can actually get a job because it's very difficult for a convicted felon to get a job, mm -hmm. uh, but through training and so forth and programs that are already in place offered in prisons uh, to get certifications in various uh, capacities um, but it, we we're focusing mainly on the Islamic education and the rehabilitation and uh, many programs have already been de developed by Yusuf and some of our other students um, uh, within the prisons and so we sponsor their programs so it's, to it's give them grassroots it is definitely uh, grassroots. there's a lot of yeah. grassroots influence within the the curriculum right uh, both from the outside uh, perspective on, on your end and both that that has been uh, corresponded by uh, the inmates incarcerated right. in prison so it makes and it's it really open, you genuine know, our, our, our Islamic education is the majority of people Actually, uh, currently, all of the people that have an interest in our Islamic education are Muslim. They want to learn more about mm -hmm. their faith. But the rehabilitation programs, the majority of them are, are non-Muslims. Mm -hmm. This is something just to o open up to all faiths. Sure. Uh, as an example, uh, some of the programs that, uh, that are run for rehabilitation, it's over 100 participants within the prison, and the majority are non-Muslims. So it's just something to bring mm -hmm. people back, give them back their humanity, Bishop. and give them their God-given dignity. Mm -hmm. The dignity that and Allah you says... You leave the we, guidance uh, to Allah. You leave the guidance uh, and the essence of the guidance to Allah. But, you know, like you said, the platforms that we have uh, before us, and, uh, and the amana, it's an mm -hmm. amana, it's a trust that has well, been given Well, if you look at the Qur'an, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَقَدْ كَرَّمْنَا بَنِي آدَمْ We have sure. ennobled Bani Adam. Mm -hmm. And yet society and the devil and, takes, the karam and away. takes that nobility away. And mm -hmm. so we just want to give people that nobility back. So a mm -hmm. lot of the programs uh, are there to give them you know, rehabilitation, to give them their, their dignity back, what they have within them to pull that back, to pull that back out. Mm -hmm. um, so it's um, it's it's um, it's program. It's beautiful to see. And, and, and one of the, the things that the, the yeah. prison where where Yusuf is right now, the administration has even gone to the point where they have put an entire gym, 